Yes, Emeka, interestingly, as a people, we are rich in the currency of trust. I'll tell you more as I speak on the state of trust in Nigeria. Well, John C. Maxwell, my coach, globally acclaimed author, motivational speaker, and a train of leader, trainer of leaders said, and I quote, relationships are built on the solid ground of trust. I'll say trust is not a bittery, it's an intentional foundation for all relationships. The Edelman Trust Barometer is an annual global trust and credibility online survey conducted by Endelman Intelligence to test how well people trust the institutions of government, business, media, and non-governmental organizations to do what is right. Now, with 2 million respondents and over 400 companies on the survey, I think it's some survey worth paying attention to. And here is why the theme for the global 2020 Edelman Trust Barometer survey report is competence and ethics. In terms of percent of predictable variance, 76% of respondents in Nigeria valued ethics above competence. It made me wonder, are Nigerians rooting for an ethical revolution as a younger Walesha Inka sang decades back? I don't know if you remember the song, Etika Revo, Eti, Etika Revolution. Now that report takes a critical look at the state of trust in Nigeria. The general picture from that report shows that Nigerians are very trusting people. Uh, businesses scored highest with 91%, followed by NGOs at 87%, the media at 84%, while the institution of government is the lowest. Only 55% of Nigerians trust the government. It is still above the global average, though, because South Africa has the lowest level of trust in government in the last six years. Um, that's in Africa. Given the ongoing drama in the fight against corruption in Nigeria, I find this report quite fascinating. And there are three points I'd like to zero in on in the Trust Barometer report. One, that CEOs are the most trusted amongst society leaders in Nigeria. 87% of Nigerians surveyed said they trust CEOs more to address our national challenges. Another 90% said CEOs should take the lead. And 82% said they want CEOs to speak up on critical issues such as climate change, immigration, impact of automation on jobs, and so on. Secondly, in the media, privately owned media ranked highest with 90%, followed by search engines at 83%, and social media at 75%, while traditional media came a distant fourth at 75%. It means that Nigerians find search engines more reliable for news and information than traditional media. Then 57% respondents, however, say they fear fake news or false information being used as weapons. In other words, weaponization of stories. And then thirdly, while CEOs scored highest in the trust barometer at 87%, Journalists came second at a close 86% and religious leaders at uh, third position. And I suppose that Kenea and I are in the right profession after all. We are now shining stars. Curiously though, in spite of the bashings against religious leaders lately, they are at a comfortable third. Across sectors in this report, retail leads with 90% 90, 90 followed by telecoms with 89%, entertainment with 88%, and food and beverages at 87%. I find that also curious because 86% of Nigerian employees want to be heard and be part of planning in their organization. And it reminds me of Barbara Kellerman in our book, Followership, where she talks about leading from below, how those with less power, less authority and influence have their ways of impacting those who have more. So, well, if you have been importing expatriates from abroad, here is the 2020 memo. Your subordinates do have some arrows in their quiver and some workplace, workplace tactics and strategies that may make the difference. So, moving forward, include them in your planning. You know, mm. For me, I'm, I'm really amazed at the very generous marks of trust, the high level exactly, of trust. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean... <laughs> Just um, why I was laughing. No, no, no. I mean, I, it, I'm are very trusting people. <laughs> um, it will take I, a lot. You know, this is, this, this, there's an innate bias when surveys like this are, do, are done. People very often do not tell you how... many how, people they... No, no, how they really feel. Oh, really? And we've seen that in so many, and in the last election, especially in, in Western countries, where people tell you what you, the researcher, what they want, believe you, they want you to, to and hear. And then they shock you. And, and, they, and then shock you with the reality. Mm. 
And I say this because in our general conversations, just us sitting here now, and I do this survey, let me ask mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. I'll start from you, Treasurer. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you trust, how much do you trust your government? No, I don't. No, the government, government is no, no, no. Well. The government was 55%. Like 50 yeah. no, no, no. 55 so is high. How, 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 you know, so who are those how much are you raise them? <laughs> Would you give them up to 55? For me, I wouldn't even uh, so, give them. So here, with, the, with the recent um, happenings yeah, here, you know, in the country, is, I wouldn't here, even Here lies them. where um, election results are written and people are announced. And that's the basis on which government is built. Is, is democracy is how you get elected leaders. And if that, if you've lost trust mm. in that, I'm amazed that they're even getting 55%. Yeah, yeah, so I, 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 I would say so this. I. And I'm saying this even for media, when mm. majority of the people <laughs> reading on the street will say, ah, I don't believe them. So now you're, they're getting 89% or yeah. it's, it's, yeah, but I'm, you I'm see amazed, that but, but I'm not saying, but I'll take it. Micro I'll, I'll, level. I'll, Traditional media is 75%, but yeah, privately owned. I'll, I'll take it, though. Yes. I'll, I'll accept it. Yeah, and I'll I'm use appreciative it. that they didn't yeah. bother to gather and collate those figures. Uh, I mean, the point for me is, is quite, uh, the one point I can take away from that, thank you for that, it was useful, is, is essentially that the private enterprises should do more in terms of governance. Um, and I was looking at, you know, so recently I was talking to a lady who is very uh, intellectual and she's involved in a lot of the economics of the running of the country. And she was saying, look, she doesn't know why we don't do concessioning more of our infrastructural development. And concession, yeah. I thought, I said, oh, it's concessioning like privatization. I said, no, you give them a, you know, like for example, you give someone a contract to do a road and then they claim it back through toll fees for a period and then you get your road back. So it's a kind of give and take and it's purely business. Because when I look at businessmen who are successful in Nigeria, it's clear we know what to do. We know what to do when mm -hmm. the money is at stake. But when we come to government things, we forget the profit and loss okay, margin. Okay, Jesus is and we start his head. Head. Well, I, 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 so, I, so why not just give these businessmen a little rope to no. handle the things that they do, just monitor them and let them deliver? Because governments Be are not capable of I doing agree. No, but yeah, because Look at the road um, Dangote is you know, putting together somewhere. Um, you know, look at what Tony Lumelu has been able to do with, with you know, this sort of apprenticeship, sort of, you know, growing new entrepreneurs yeah. and if you compare that with what government has been trying to do with the what is it That's called now? Is government no but but once it's government there's just some sort of but the truth uh, the truth of the matter is that i i'm, I'm shocked that I people I'm, I'm yeah, shocked yeah, so that i'm shocked that people actually trust their ceos of private companies right this 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 country runs no, really? on government the government is basically what runs this country <laughs> So when you see a successful CEO of a private company, he's probably in bed with government. So um, I can't... These guys are so skeptical. Yeah, I can't or divorce. Is it cynical? I cannot separate the two. So um, I don't see how you can trust your CEO when he's hobnobbing with your governor and you have, you have no idea what they're discussing. He's hobnobbing with the minister the next day and they're coming up with all sorts of things. And uh, in, in effect... Most CEOs are enriching themselves through government, and contract. that's the truth. Yes, I, the CEOs have become too rich in this country, and it follows that it's not their salary and it's not their conditions Who then of employment. Can you trust, Chuka? So there must be something more than <laughs> Who that. Who then can you trust? See, uh, nobody say, from Libra. <laughs> these um, these trusts um, rating first and foremost, who are they talking to? Uh, what's the percentage of the people mm -hmm. that we talked to? Um, that would determine because. Also, even sitting here, mm. we and then we also relate with people on the street, <laughs> and then you know what's out there. And then, um, some of these, like Chuka said, some of these um, CEOs, you know, in, in the biggest business in Nigeria is government, yeah. and, and so anybody that is doing well in Nigeria must have some form of relationship with you. That's why somebody, an entrepreneur, can leave his business and go into government. Yeah. If you want to be a rich man in other societies, you go into entrepreneurship. But if you want to be a rich man here, you go into business, uh, government, Compared or you have a relationship with government. And then coming to your suggestion, concession. what happens, those concessions is that they are yeah. big, they are big, they are big contracts. Contract, we have concessions. Does. We, have, we have concession <laughs> toll gates before. And at the end of the day, even yeah. now, we are still concessioning. Mm. At the end of the day, people just make money from it. Go to Oyo Airport. I talked about it here. Yeah. Somebody is there collecting 1,500 naira from every traveler. It's a concession. But at the end of the day, what comes out of it? Nothing. So this CEO sits down there. They're looking for government patronage. The moment Emeka goes back into government, his friends, if not Why sink, Emeka? since he left government, will be sending congratulatory message to him. Are we off my mic now? So off that, the uh, mic. <laughs>
Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews has killed the faith. <laughs> There's no trust left. All right, from solutions to analysis and more solutions. After the break, and in a matter of fact tone, Chuka gives us a grim diagnosis. He says Nigeria is on fire. Wow, Chuka. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 